Hi data scientists welcome to breath of data science i'm tarun i have a masters in data science and i'm currently working as a data scientist in germany i created this channel to share my knowledge of data science programming and related things in my last video i talked about assessing the quality of data for data mining and machine learning algorithms if you haven't checked that out uh, you can find it in the description box or on the top right of your screen now today continuing on that i will discuss measures of proximity in data science in data mining machine learning to perform transformations of data during your analysis so the term proximity between two objects refers to how close they are in terms of their attributes uh, within the two data objects and the proximity uh, measures they generally refer to measurement of similarity or dissimilarity between data objects and they are important because they are used by a number of data mining techniques such as clustering nearest neighbor classification and anomaly detection as well so now uh, continuing on the video i'll firstly touch upon the high level definitions and explore how they are related to each other and then move forward with how proximity in two data objects uh, with one simple attribute and moving to objects with multiple attributes can be calculated so let's see first of all what is similarity similarity is nothing but a numerical measure which tells us that okay how much of uh, the two objects are alike or same it is higher for a pair of objects that are more same and it is usually non negative and between 0 and 1 so if uh, two objects have zero similarity it means that they have no similarity at all and if they have similarity measure as 1 then it means that they are completely similar to each other now let's see what is dissimilarity dissimilarity is also a numerical measure which tells us that how much two objects that you are currently measuring are different from each other it is lower for a pair of objects that are more similar to each other and it usually ranges between 0 and infinity now that we have uh, gotten out similarity and dissimilarity out of the way now let's talk about a transformation function which is a function that is used to convert similarity to dissimilarity and vice versa or it can also be used to transform one proximity measure to uh, make it fall into one a particular range of numbers so the formula you see on the screen where s dash is your new transformed proximity measure value where s is your current proximity measure value uh, min of s is your minimum of that per, uh, current value and max s is your maximum of that current value and this transformation function is just one example out of all available options out there so now let's talk about similarity and dissimilarity between simple attributes or objects having simple attributes so the proximity of objects with a number of attributes is defined by combining the proximity of individual attributes so let's first discuss proximity or closeness between two objects that only have one single attribute you see an image on the screen that defines the type of attribute and how its similarity and dissimilarity is calculated so let's understand it better uh, it better and go through some examples so let's consider objects that are described by one nominal attribute as you see on the screen also uh, so how to compare similarity of objects like this so nominal attributes only tell us about the distinctness of the object so uh, how different they are from each other and hence in such a case the similarity is defined as one if the attribute values are equal or they match and zero uh, otherwise and uh, oppositely you can also define similarity if the attributes are matching then you define the dissimilarity as zero and uh, the higher the difference between the attribute values uh, or mismatch the higher the dissimilarity now let's consider uh, an object which only has one single ordinal attribute uh, the situation is a little more complicated here because uh, in ordinal attributes there is information about order uh, encoded within the attribute value and it needs to be taken into account so consider an attribute that makes uh, or measures the quality of a product so it can be let's say on the scale poor fair okay good wonderful or let's say from a range of 1 to 5 where 1 is poor and 5 is wonderful uh, and similarly so let's say we have three products product 1 p1 product 2 p2 and product 3 p3 who have quality as uh, wonderful or 5 good uh, or 4 and okay or 3 respectively so in order to compare these ordinal quantities uh, 
they are mapped to successive integers as I already did uh, by mapping these uh, scale of order to 1 to 5. So uh, then in this case the dissimilarity between let's say product 1 and product 2 will be uh, 4 minus 3 or uh, because the product 1 was at scale wonderful and product 2 was at scale good and the dissimilarity will be 1. Now let's talk about the attribute types uh, which are property of interval or ratio. So the natural measure of dissimilarity between two objects in such a case will be the absolute difference of their values. So for example, uh, comparing the weight uh, now and let's say some time ago, 10 pounds heavier, yeah, 10 pounds lighter or something similar to that. Now uh, in case if you are confused about uh, the type of attributes that I was talking about, the nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio type of attributes. I previously posted a video on that. Uh, I'll also link that in the description below and uh, you can see it uh, on the top of your screen right now. If you don't understand these attributes, I'll highly recommend that you go check out that video first uh, and come back here. Now I'm assuming that you have seen uh, th that video and now you understand what different type of uh, attributes mean. And now moving forward, let's talk about the similarity and uh, dissimilarity between data objects separately. How do you calculate dissimilarity between two data objects? Uh, let's talk about distance measurements first. Uh, tells you the similarity or dissimilarity with certain properties. So the first distance measure uh, we'll talk about is the uh, Euclidean distance or Euclidean distance. So this distance is uh, between two points x and y and uh, it can be uh, in one, two, three or higher dimensional spaces and it is uh, calculated by the formula that you see on the screen right now. Uh, in this formula you see the n uh, which is the number of dimensions and uh, x and y uh, k are your uh, respectively uh, elements in that particular dimension uh, or the attribute component for x and y. So now let's look at an example here also. So in this example you see uh, four points on a two dimensional space uh, p1, p2, p3, p4. You see the uh, coordinates uh, of all the four points. And now we can calculate something called a distance matrix using this Euclidean distance. Uh, and you can see that okay, the Euclidean distance between the same point will always be zero. And how does it uh, factor in with the uh, other, uh, what do you say, points as well? So in this distance matrix, uh, you see, uh, let's say we take the point P1 and P4, where the distance is the highest. So you can say that these points are the least similar or the most dissimilar to each other. Whereas uh, you can say about P2 and P3, which has the lowest distance uh, in the entire matrix, that they are the most similar points or objects in that particular two dimensional space. Now let's talk about another distance metric, which is Minkowski distance. Uh, it is nothing but generalization of the Euclidean distance. And uh, the formula by which you can calculate is now you see on the screen. Common examples of Minkowski distance uh, which depends on the parameter R. So if R is 1, uh, it's called a city block or a Manhattan or a taxi cab or L1 norm distance. Uh, and a common example is the Hamming distance, which is nothing but number of bits that are different between two objects that only have binary attributes. So for example, uh, if you want to calculate the distance between two binary vectors, you might want to use this particular distance metric. If r is equal to 2, then it's uh, nothing but Euclidean distance. And if r is infinity, then it's called supremum or L max or, or L infinity norm distance. And uh, that is the maximum difference between any uh, attribute of the objects. And uh, just to make it calculable, we put a limit on it and uh, you calculate it like this that you see on the screen right now. So now let's see an, uh, an example for this as well. So we have uh, another two dimensional point space where you see the points and now we calculate L1, L2 and uh, L infinity distance or norms for these. And uh, the logic is the same here that the higher the distance between two points, the more dissimilar they are uh, and uh, lower the distance means that more similar they are. So distances such as the Euclidean distance, uh, they have some well-known properties. So for example, if a distance between two points x and y uh, is there, then they hold this particular three properties. So the first property is positivity. So any distance uh, between x and y is greater than zero if x and y are not equal. 
and if distance between x and y is zero, then it's only possible if x and y are same. The second is symmetric symmetry property. So distance between x and y is always equal to distance between y and x. The third uh, is the triangle inequality, which means that distance between x and z will always be less than equal to distance between x and y and distance between y and z. And uh, the measures that satisfy all these properties uh, are called proximity metrics. So far we have talked about the dissimilarity between two data objects. Now let's focus more on the similarity between data objects. So for similarity, uh, the triangle inequality property that we just discussed does not usually hold uh, but symmetry and uh, positivity typically do and to be explicit if similarity between x and y following uh, properties will be hold so the first property is if the similarity between x and y is 1 uh, then it's only possible if x is y equal to y uh, and if similarity between x and y uh, is always equal to similarity between y and x so there is no general analog of the triangle inequality for the similarity measure a few different metrics uh, for similarity measures so let's talk about the first one which is similarity measures for binary data uh, and they are also called uh, similarity coefficients and they typically have a value between 0 and 1 and the comparison between two binary objects is done using the following four quantities that you see on your screen right now so first is f00 uh, so which means nothing but uh, when the number of attributes uh, where x is 0 and y is 0 uh, so if you consider a binary vector and you move uh, bit by bit uh, between those two vectors if at the first bit if x is 0 and y is also 0 at that particular bit then you'll say f00 is uh, 1 because both attributes uh, values are 0 f01 means that uh, x is 0 and y is 1 f10 means y is 0 x is 1 and f11 means that both values are 1 so now you can use these similarity coefficients to calculate the similarity matrix and the first one is simple matching coefficient which is defined uh, by the formula you see on the screen so simple matching coefficient is equal to number of matching attribute values and uh, divided by the total number of attributes uh, so f11 and f00 means okay when uh, both have the same values in their similarity coefficients and you divide it by the total number of attribute uh, similarity coefficients the second metric is jacquard coefficient it is calculated by uh, number of matching presences so a presence is something when the attribute value is 1 uh, you do not consider 0 to be a presence uh, and uh, you divide it by the number of attributes that are not involved in the non-presence matches so let's uh, take an example here to understand it a bit clearer uh, so now on the screen you see two uh, vectors x and y uh, with 10 bits each and uh, you see their respective position so if you want to calculate the f01 similarity coefficient uh, so it's only at two places at the 7th and the 10th bit uh, where x is 0 and y is 1 if for 10 uh, it's only 1 at the first bit for f00 it's uh, at the rest of the 7 bits and f11 uh, it's not present at all so if you want to calculate the simple matching coefficient here you do it uh, by using the formula that I just described and it comes out to be 0.7 whereas jacquard coefficient comes out to be 0 in this particular case. The third metric uh, we can potentially use is called cosine similarity. So documents are often represented as vectors where uh, let's say each attribute represents the frequency with which a particular word occurs in that document. So you can use cosine similarity uh, to measure how much two documents are similar to each other. Uh, so let's say if x and y are two document vectors then you can calculate their cosine similarity using this particular formula that you see on your screen right now where dot indicates the vector dot product and uh, x with bar is the length of the vector x so let's say uh, take an example for cosine similarity as well so you have again two vectors where you can assume for every bit uh, the number of times a particular word appears in that particular document so let's say uh, for the document x the word uh, data comes three times or signs come two times and something like that so you get a vector where 10 different words are present in x and same goes for y so when you calculate the dot product uh, you get uh, the value 5 uh, dot product is nothing but multiplication bit by bit and then adding them so and you can calculate the length of the vectors as well and you can calculate the cosine similarity by 
dividing the dot product with uh, multiplication of the length of the vectors so you might be thinking that how do you go about finding similarity between objects that have continuous uh, attributes in its data objects so for that you can use something called correlation uh, it is a measurement to measure the linear uh, linear relationship between the attributes of the objects uh, that have either binary or continuous variables so you can calculate the correlation between two objects x and y as uh, with the formula that you see on the screen uh, it is nothing but a combination of covariance standard deviation uh, and uh, you can calculate the covariance and standard deviations uh, as you can see on the screen right now it is nothing different from what you know in the statistical uh, terms and uh, till now we have discussed and defined both similarity and dissimilarity measures amongst data objects now we should also focus on the potential issues that are faced in proximity calculations so the issues in proximity calculations that are usually faced first is how to handle the case in which attributes have different scales or they are correlated with each other or how do you calculate proximity between objects that are composed of different types of attributes so for example one data object can have attributes that are quantitative and qualitative and the third issue is how do you handle proximity calculation when attributes have different weights uh, that is when all the attributes within a data object do not contribute equally to the proximity of objects and uh, given that uh, the question comes to be how do you select the right proximity measure so there are a few general observations that may be helpful there is no universal answer to this it's Uh, based on the problem that you are trying to solve and the data that is involved in that particular problem so the first type of proximity measure that uh, should fit the type of data so for example many types of data dense continuous data the metric distance measures such as euclidean distance are often used uh, and proximity between continuous or attributes is most often expressed in terms of differences and distance measures provide a well defined way of combining these differences into an overall proximity measure so as i explained earlier uh, if you calculate distance between two particular uh, objects the higher the distance then the higher the differences and the dissimilarity so you can relate the distance to continuous attributes like that whereas for sparse data which often consists of asymmetric attributes uh, and if you are not familiar with asymmetric attributes i created a video on that you can check it out in the description box or on the top right of your screen now the way you typically employ a similarity measure is to ignore the zero zero matches so conceptually this reflects the fact that for a pair of complex objects similarity depends on the number of characteristics that they both share because we are talking about sparse data so we are focused on uh, the data which is present not the data where most of the values are zero so uh, this means that we are focused on the number of characteristics that they share not uh, the characteristics that they both lack so for such a type of data you can use cosine similarity or jacquard in uh, coefficient uh, depending on your choice and these are just a few suggestions that you can potentially follow they don't cover all types of data sets that exist and uh, the final determination of proximity measure is often problem dependent as i already said so i i know this was a long video and it covered a lot and if you have any confusions you did not understand anything please mention it in the comment and i'll answer all of them in the next video i will cover how you can start with a conceptual data pre processing for your data science problems and i will see you again here next time until then keep coding and if you like the video then don't forget to subscribe like and comment to support me in creating more videos like this i will see you again next week